Hello there, it's me, Paul Oat King Johnson. It's your boy. It's <laughs> so imagine, if you will, you're animating something with pretty detailed helmets or costumes or guns. Like in TIE Fighter, for instance, I was gonna have to draw and animate these TIE pilot helmets from every angle, and they're pretty tricky things to draw consistently. So I cheated! Would you like to know how? <laughs> Let me show you. I'll show you a shot that I'm working on from my current film. I'm using TV paint, as always. And in this scene, our main character is going to open an airlock and blow all the air out into space. So she grabs onto these handles, activates the magnetic boots, and slides the visor down on a helmet. Uh, here are the really rough keyframes. Pretty rough stuff. Like I said, the helmet is going to be a bit tricky to draw over and over and over again, so I'll deal with that last. First up, I roughed in the details, the head, face, spacesuit, etc. It's a real mess, but when it's inked, it should look quite nice. Now let's get the helmet on there, using the same mysterious trick that I used for TIE Fighter. So first, I'll save this animation. Export. Then over to Cinema 4D, where as you can see, I have roughed up a very basic model of the helmet based on the character design sketches. We can have the visor open or closed. Using the sketch and tune filter in Cinema 4D, we can render this out as black and white lines, like so. Now that's all well and good, but we need it to be in the right place on the animation. So, I will drag the animation over into Cinema 4D, make a background, drag the animation here into the background, there it is, although nothing's going to happen if we move our timeline, there's a couple of things you have to do first, there's always a couple of things isn't there? First we click on our animation here, editor, you have to animate preview, Go back to color, click on the little picture here, that takes us into our animation tab and you want to change it from exact second to exact frame. So now everything's set up, the animation will play. Now it's time to painstakingly place the helmet onto the character. Now, you're probably seeing already, it could be a bit tricky, because if the helmet's there, we're not going to see our character's face at all, how are we going to know? if we have it lined up or not. Don't worry, I made it transparent material. If I slap that on the helmet, the helmet is now transparent. All right, so I think that's okay for our first frame. Frame three. So using this technique, if you, uh, if she was holding, if she was holding a really detailed gun you could do exactly the same thing with the gun. A gun that's extremely detailed and would be hard to keyframe. You know, something from Warframe, for instance. So now we have to render this helmet out as black and white lines and bring it back into TV Paint. Go! Save as an AVI, a quick time, whatever you want. I'll drag and drop this into TV Paint. Import it as a layer. And so now if we turn the opacity down a bit, you should be able to see we have our helmet on top of the character's face. Now you may be thinking, if she has to pull the visor down, why don't you just do that in the 3D model? Render that out and bring it in. Why have you rendered it out with the uh, the face mask down? Well, if we go back over here, if we have the visor open, like so, and I render that out, the visor's open, but we can see inside there's loads of extraneous details inside it, which makes it very, very difficult. Let me just demonstrate quickly. If we bring it in now, with the visor open, as you can see there are a lot of details showing through that we would then have to erase, you know, just, just to get her face back, which is very time consuming. 
So easier to just have the whole thing like this and then I will draw the visor line in. But how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that and know where they go? Well that's quite easy. Let's just make a background, uh, stick a nice solid red colour on it and render everything out with Sketch and Tomb turned off this time. So now I bring this in to TV Paint and if we turn the opacity down on our lines we can now see underneath so I can see where the visor line is where the little bits of padding inside are and if I turn that down as well so I can see the character's face underneath turn everything off except for the helmet and the face I can now start drawing those bits in and erasing this line here that we don't need so first we'll get rid of this. We don't need this line. We don't need it. And we'll put this on top of the visor in. Alright, so at this point the hand is bringing this visor down. So now we want just to draw in the little bits like like this bits inside the helmet so now I'm gonna ink the face get rid of the bits of hair that we don't need that are sticking outside the helmet and all that kind of stuff uh, we're gonna need to redraw a bit of hair as well so there's, there's a little bit of work to to do but like I say on the whole it's much faster than drawing the helmet myself every single frame. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. A couple of seconds for you. A couple of hours for me. Okay, so that's the helmet and the face inked. So now, if you'll excuse me, I'll fast forward to uh, inking the rest of it. Okay, so it's several hours later and the inking on the keyframes is done. As you can see here, I've added a couple of pauses to show where it'll slow down, but now we need to add in-betweens. To do that, I need to add a blank frame in between each frame and then draw the in-between. Okay, so if we, uh, that was at six frames per second, we'll change it to 12. So now it will be running like this. So we need to draw an extra drawing on each of these blank frames. And I'm going to start my in-betweening on the helmet. So let's turn all the other layers off. Just leave the helmet on. So how do you in-between? I'm sure you know how to in-between. <laughs> we need to draw between a frame between here and there. The red shows the previous frame, the blue shows the frame after it and um, we can use the light table function of TV paint to move them both into position like that and just start manually drawing between them to create our in-between of the helmet like so but as you can see this is how we got into this mess in the first place the helmet's very complicated and if we've got the helmet as a 3D object then why not just use the 3D software to in-between for us the helmet at least, we'll have to draw the rest of the character, but we can get Cinema 4D to in between the helmet for us. So, we go over to Cinema 4D, as you can see everything is looking as it did before. Turn off the background, make sure Sketch and Tune is on, and I will render this out again exactly like I did before. Except, this time I'll double the frame rate, which will give us twice the number of frames. Here it says the frame rate was 30 and that gave us 16 frames. So we'll change this to 60. That will give us 31 frames. Render. So basically what this is doing is it is rendering the in-betweens for us without us having to do any work. There we go, that's done. So I will export this out. Then I'll drag and drop this into TV Paint again. What you should be able to see now is that between each of our keyframes we have a completely new helmet that uh, Cinema 4D just rendered out for us at absolutely no extra time cost to us, or to me. 
what I'll do now is in between these faces. So I will see you in an hour or two. I'm in between the faces, now it looks like this, so a little bit smoother. Now I'm going to in between the rest of it, the body, the arms, all of that stuff, so see you in a few hours. It's two hours later and I finished the in-betweens, it looks like this now. There are still some pauses in there, so I'm going to add more in-betweens and crank the frame rate up. So I'll see you in a couple of hours. Okay, so it's about eight hours later, it's jumped up to 60 frames now, and it looks like this. So yeah, not, not bad, I've added stuff in like uh, the hair flipping around when she moves quickly. So that's done. Now this background, this background needs to be coloured. The background as you can see, it's actually a 3D model rendered out in lines. For this film I made a very rough 3D set so that everything would remain consistent. I would always know where everything is. And here's the exact part of the corridor that we're in at the moment. I just did the sketch and tune thing and rendered it out as lines like so. So I did this for all of my backgrounds such as the one in this scene here. And then I will take the background over to Photoshop and color it by hand. I have a couple of previous ones open here that I can use for color reference so everything stays consistent. So let's, uh, let's get coloring this. I'll see you in a little bit. The background is done. It's uh, about three or four hours later. I've, I've finished the background. Looks all right. Looks all right. So back over to TV paint. We'll drag and drop the background in. So now I'm going to color the character. What I like to do is find a good frame. This one will do. And then I'll save that as a PNG or something. Bring that into Photoshop. And I will color this, this frame in Photoshop and that will be our guide. For coloring the rest of it. Give me a moment and I will just do that.
here's the rough shading guide that I worked out just in monochrome and here are the colours. Since it's in a dark hallway the colour scheme has to be darker to match the ambient light. So now I will bring this and this over into TV Paint and I'll start shading and when the shading is all put on I'll stick the colours on top of that. It's easier to do it in monochrome first I find. It's just a lot easier. So I'll do that. I'll see you in a bit. Day 5. I'm running out of food, water is low, and I've finished the shading. I'm gonna start putting the solid colours in. Here we go. Right, it's uh, I think three hours later I've got the flat colours on, like so. So let's apply the shading. So what I do is I get this shading layer that we did earlier, and I'll move that up on top of the flat colour layer. And I will change this colour blending mode. I find that using hard light is pretty good. So this, obviously, this is what we want it to look like. This is what it looks like now. So you can't just use a blending mode and that will do the shading for you. What we want, or at least what I do, is it will change the colors enough. I'll now merge these two layers, the shading layer and the, the flat color layer. So now we've got this weird, this weird looking color, which isn't right but it's applied it to all of our frames, all 60 of them. And now, I'll zoom in a bit. Go to Color, Color Replacer, and we'll start replacing these colors with these colors that we want. So we'll start on the face. The red is the color it will replace to, and we want it to replace to that. So now, select all of these, apply to the whole thing, let's do the hair, so we want to replace this with this, so that, that will replace quite nicely, select all, apply, let's do the, the yellow part, yep, place that with that. Select apply and then replace the third tone with this. Uh-huh. There's probably an inbuilt feature that's uh, a lot quicker and more automated than this but this seems this seems to work. I mean we've replaced almost all the colors now we just need to do this final one here so we replace that with that there we go but yeah that was pretty quick replacing replacing the palette across all 60 frames was as you could see pretty swift the color replacement method is good but as you can see sometimes it does have problems it's left a lot of the yellow around the side so you may have to go in and manually clean some bits out like this so i'll turn um, i'll get my fill bucket tool stick it on to expand one so when I, when I fill this colour it will eat into that and get rid of it. 
get rid of most most of that halo around the edge for us. I mean, we're zoomed in 240%, so no one's going to see these pixels anyway in the final film. But uh, yeah, it's good good to clean things up when you can. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, that uh, that matches our our color palette quite nicely now. A couple more things to do before the end. When the visor is down over the face here, I do want I do want the eyes to show through a bit more, the eyes and the and the teeth. If you look at uh, reference photos from various anime, even when you have a color tinted visor over the front, the eyes will usually be brighter, so you can just make out the details a bit easier. Macross 2 has some seriously good visor shading in it, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So let's just deal with these pupils. I'm going to make a new layer, just for convenience's sake. Put the highlight on the layer, on the new layer rather, like so. There's the highlights. So if we go to the layer underneath the highlights, I should now quite easily be able to just add a little dot underneath. It might not seem necessary. Like there's there's enough detail on these eyes already. They're so tiny, and when you see it at full size, there's, there's so you don't really need it. But I don't know. I think it adds. I like doing close-ups of eyes. I like adding loads and loads of detail to eye close-ups. Just look at the way my man Satoshi Urushihara does eyes. This is what I want. <laughs> Obviously animating 60 frames of eyes shaded in that level of detail would, would drive a man insane, I think. But yeah, it's definitely a toss-up between um, the king, Haruhiko Mikimoto here, when it comes to eyes. It's a toss-up between Mikimoto and uh, Satoshi Urushihara, I would say, for the most detailed eye colouring and shading. So really all we need now is a shadow. I can draw a shadow painstakingly for every single frame, which is what I normally do. But if it's a shot like this, where she's against a really flat background, it's much easier to simply copy, we'll copy our layer with all the shading on, duplicate that underneath. Select all. Grab, color adjust, turn it all the way down so it's just totally black. And just, um, <laughs> we've got an instant shadow on, on all of our layers now. This, obviously this is a super, a super cheating shortcut, and you can't use it on areas where, like we couldn't use it if she was over here for instance, because the shadow would have to bend over the pipes, over this thing on the wall here. So you can only use this kind of cheating thing on flat areas. But luckily we do have a flat area here. I'm going to have to erase it over here, but I mean that's no problem. So yeah, that looks alright. Uh, apply that to all these frames. And just delete it from here. I can go in and manually delete it from each frame. Or I can make a new layer. Grab some really obvious colour like blue here. Draw the shape that we want to add it out. And if I turn the mask on, which is here, if I hit delete on the shadow layer, that will delete everything within that mask. I think there, there's one here. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do the same thing there, same thing there. Just, just a few, few time-saving tricks that I've learned along the way. I think that looks okay. I think that looks all right. So in the final composite, when we've got a little bit of steam coming in front of her and coming out of the walls, maybe I think that, that'll look quite nice. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for sticking with me so long, <laughs> watching all that. I hope it was entertaining for you, or maybe you learned something if you're using TV Paint. I'm making good progress on the film, so thank you very much to everyone keeping me going on Patreon. It's really nice and it really keeps me motivated to keep crunching away, knowing that so many people believe in the project and they're willing to keep it going, so thank you very much. Thank you all. I appreciate it. I really do. I've been streaming every Friday, 
at midnight UK time. If any of you want to come and join me and just talk about stuff, that's me streaming on YouTube every Friday. Drop by and say hello. And that's that. Thank you again, and I will see you next time. Cheerio for now.